Today's show has everything you need to get ready for week 15. There is so much happening. We wave goodbye to Urban Meyer on the show in our very own special way. And we break down our starts of the week and a whole lot more, including Jason's boom, boom kicker. As the saga continues, make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the video. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. We also want to thank Trade for supporting the show. Look, we have a podcast. Our goal is to make you the best fantasy player ever. Trade's goal is to make every cup of coffee your best ever. And it's pretty cool. I mean, I've been in there in the trade system. You take a a little coffee quiz. Like coffee, like I I like coffee, but it can be difficult cuz I'm I am no expert. I just know that I want coffee in the morning and I want it to taste good. And trade has made that process a lot easier for me. Take a little quiz and they will match you with one of 400 plus craft coffees, all of their partners, US-based roasters, um, that are committed to ethical and sustainable sourcing. If you've been living the subpar coffee life, please stop. It's not worth it. That's like literally my favorite part of the morning. Life's too short, man. Drink some good coffee and Trade will help you do that. And they will guarantee that you love your first match. For our listeners right now, Trade is offering your first bag free and $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, go to drinktrade.com slash footballers. Use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. Take the quiz to start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash footballers. Promo code FOOTBALLERS for your first bag free and $5 off your bundle. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's playoff time. Oh, 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 yeah. You've got to win. (laughs) Wanted to throw some more, (laughs) some new lyrics in there. That's fine. I like it. I need to, I need to write an opera. Or an 80s cartoon. Oh, I could do that that, too. That that sound, when you threw that in, Uh that sounded like the, uh, like a, a power line in the middle of a like intro to a GI Joe or something. What if you've I... got to win? <laughs> Just really motivational yeah. in the lyrics. <laughs> to be Buy the our best. toys. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. <laughs> All right, welcome in. So much going on. So much going on. Al Borland is uh, behind the scenes, uh, keeping things together for us today. Uh, the judge. Uh, is isn't with us? You riding and, dirty back there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, wait, <laughs> wait, that's that's Brooks's thing. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm on the throne right now. <laughs> okay. All right. That means you're wealthy as well. Uh, never not working on today's show. Everybody has enjoyed that segment. We got some really uh, good insights for you there. News and notes, injury updates to talk about. A very exciting development in the world of the <laughs> head coaches. Well, well, you know, for most people, uh, there's one guy who's pretty bummed about it. Yeah, and uh, fantasy forecast matchup starts of the week. Boom, boom, kicker. There's a lot going on. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Stay with us. All, I mean, they, people people call it the off season. We we just call it the preseason. Like when the when the regular season ends and the fantasy season is over. The preseason for the next year begins. It's never over. This Be- is a because we're never not working, fellas. This is a <laughs> year-round <laughs> podcast, and so stay with us. We have some fun episodes. We get into the truth of every position. We uh, the the footy the awards. Footy awards. The, like a lot of people talk about the Emmys, right? The Oscars, the Grammys, right? <laughs> Those were cool. Yeah, we've kind of. I mean, I, in I, the fifties, it's it's fair to say that we've. We're at least on that level with yeah. the footies. But uh, you can also join our fantasy community, jointhefoot.com. The off season is a good time to find league mates. We always say your league is only as good as the people playing with you. You can find some awesome people over there. And uh, let's get going. 
Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, on today's Never Not Working, Jason, near and dear to your heart, we're talking about Team Hefty Boys. Yeah, let's go, big fellas. We're talking about the boys in the trenches, the offensive line, because it is important. It is very important to fantasy football. They are the unsung heroes, in fact, because they score zero fantasy points. Well, maybe they're lined up and they're eligible and they and you get the uh as it, But yes, they score zero fantasy yeah. points. Have you guys seen the the trend that we are uh, it's out there being called the thick six whenever whenever one of the oh, big boys scores? Yeah, baby. It's sensational. So I'm I'm all aboard with that. But anyways, offensive line, we want to talk about and look at some of the or look at the biggest approver and, and the people that have had the biggest slides because it can – the offensive line, because you have five people, things can improve overnight and things can just vanish in an instant. So take, for example, the Los Angeles Chargers. They finished last year dead last in the PFF offensive line rankings. You know, you had some, you had some injuries. Uh, somehow Herbert was able to overcome that. But they have managed to turn that around and are currently sitting at the fifth best in terms of pass block uh, efficiency. And it's, is that the biggest improvement this year? It is. Well, from dead last to number five, like that's that's a pretty solid jump. And just to say of like the, uh, we're not going to talk about the Steelers' offensive line, but that's where like it comes to mind of the the biggest knock for for Najee over the off season was well the offensive line, right? You're like you can't possibly improve. The Chargers are showing you. Yes, you can. You get some pieces back. You make some moves. Like you, you know, you make a, a first round pick on the offensive line, and you can actually solve things pretty quickly, uh, like the Chargers have. The the Colts should have done that for Andrew Luck. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They, well, they they tried to do that because the Colts are in fact one of the biggest uh, slides where they came into the season ranked as PFF's number two offensive line uh and that pass blocking has dropped to 29th they were seventh in 2020 they are 29th currently this year and you've seen that like michael Pittman has been the only somewhat consistent pass catcher uh for for the passing attack for carson wentz and in Indian, indianapolis and then you can look at also the saints like what's going on with the saints their offensive line was always heralded as mm -hmm. they just they have elite players, and now you have to ask yourself the question: Was it the offensive line, or was it in fact Drew Brees? Because as a Saint, over half of Drew Brees' pass attempts they came out in two and a half seconds. Like he was always one of the fastest passers in the league. And then you look at what Jameis, Trevor, and Taysom have done. They are thirty-first. The only player who's holding onto the ball longer than those quarterbacks is Taylor Heineke. And you've seen their pass blocking drop to 19th currently in 2021. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, both both of those, right? You you went from Philip Rivers to Carson Wentz, uh, someone that is going to hold the ball, right. take sacks. So I think going forward, looking at those quarterback changes, when you're going from a vet to someone else, the the pass blocking grade probably is affected by that. But I want to go back to the Chargers real quick, sure, because early in the offseason, we had you know kind of offensive line previews. And they were our biggest. They they were the team that made the best offseason moves. Uh, they, yeah. We yes. wanted Ryan Lindsley as Car as Cardinal fans. Oh, we lost out on the the great center. They got him. Uh, they got Belaga. They spent a first round pick, and we were like, "This is an offensive line that was bad. That's going to be good." And it did come to fruition. Yes. And look what it's done for Austin Eckler. Not that he was bad before, or he couldn't be Najee Harris this year. But he's, but he's way better than Najee. Because the offensive line is opening things up, and it's goal line, it's touchdowns. So next year, coming in when we've got that offensive line look, I think that you know I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take it even more seriously when it comes to goal line opportunities. We also have to correct you, Jason, because you said uh, Ryan Lindsley, who was a quarterback. Oh yes, you meant Corey. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I he would not Ryan be Lindsley. a good center. Uh, Probably not. It is interesting to me the correlation between the quarterback play and then how it translates to the grade that the offensive line receives right you right. have 
an interdependency you have there. a chicken egg situation. Yeah, and and we we saw Herbert overcame a bad line and looked really good. And so maybe the offensive line improvements were a reason to believe that it was that he wasn't going to regress at a minimum, or that he could improve. That is a very good point. And so you know you you're not going to find. Uh, your receivers down the field if you're under pressure all the time. And so if you look at sustainability of a breakout year and tie it into offensive line play and improvement, that could make a big difference. You know, we've we've seen some of these younger quarterbacks that have never been afforded that kind of protection. We we haven't really, you know, not that I'm giving him a pass at this point in his career, but we've never really seen Daniel Jones protected. Oh, right? it never. No, his the pass blocking for Daniel Jones has been atrocious for his entire career. And you combine that with play calling from from uh, Mr. Garrett, yeah. and, and you had problems. So uh, it, it is an interesting thing to look at that correlation, and it's a good example with the Chargers specifically at you know paying attention to two or three teams that make active moves in the off season. Theirs was uh, you know a first round pick plus the. The signing and and other teams need to do the same thing to get their young passers an opportunity. Yeah, and f- and the Cardinals are a good example of that too. I mean, Kyler is an MVP candidate or was for the majority of the year, and they made the investment in Rodney Hudson, and it's made it's paid dividends throughout. Yeah, and I, for you know the Chargers, I think it just again just kind of reiterates how forward thinking the that whole organization is now. I mean, with the the change of how they're looking at fourth down. They they didn't go with uh, the situation of the coach feeling like, well, my offensive scheme is just so good that I can overcome uh, a porous offensive line. Uh, I'm you know Seattle. I'm not. Well, not I, I don't want to name any names. That here. would be not just my system. That would be my quarterback so good that we don't even yes. care. Like Russ was never given that. Yes, he was. Luck. It was always Russell Wilson bailing them out because they never fixed the offensive yeah. line. So yeah. that's just. That's a good piece. We will be, you know, tracking over the off or the the off season or the extended buy, as whatever we whatever want to call it here. Yeah. Uh, but who is the team that really makes the investment to try and fix that offensive line? Because that does turn into positive fantasy implications. Get up to a hundred percent dandruff protection that is never not working with Head and Shoulder Scalp Shield technology available at Walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my. Be gone. Goodbye, Urban Meyer. Oh. Oh, man. That was actually I. You might have thought that was from a musical or something. That was live feed from the locker room. Mm-hmm. That was you. You listened. You heard that. They've voice. been working on it for weeks. That was Into Marvin the- Jones, uh, <laughs> the yeah. tenor there. James Robinson. James Robinson was in there. Mm-hmm. Which it, he's a bass. The only person you know mad about this was Laquan Treadwell. <laughs> 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 he, he was the he's one. Like, this is my shot. He's the one talking to Con. He's like, "Don't make any rash decisions here, my friends." <laughs> yeah, let's take let's take it easy. And Tavon Austin too. But yeah, he, he, well, he, couldn't, you, he couldn't deny when he saw Trevor Lawrence on the tambourine. He was like, <laughs> "Okay, this is probably for the best." So we'll lead with this. Urban Meyer was relieved <laughs> of his duties. Didn't even make it through Look, an entire year. Turns out. You can't physically assault your employees and get Number away two. with it. We're giving him that as well. Which uh, that we, we talked about it on the green room, but the big story of yesterday afternoon, which was hot on the heels of uh, Urban Meyer and Marvin Jones having to have some words. For, for clarity, that that discussion was weeks ago. Was it? Yeah, er, he was talking about it recently, okay. but he said it happened a few weeks ago. Okay, well th- that came to light yeah. uh, yesterday, and then also a. Report from former Jacksonville kicker Josh uh, Lambeau reported that he was stretching, and then his head coach came through and gave him a good swift kick in the leg because he's the head ball coach. Because he and he declared, "I am the head ball coach, and I will kick you whenever I want to." And that's that was the final straw, and he has been removed. I am genuinely optimistic about both James Robinson and Marvin Jones Jr. For the remainder of the year, I think that uh, a move like this, the team—it's been reported that 
this was something that they all welcomed. There's, you know, text messages to their agents with the peace sign and like they're ready for to move on. And Daryl Bevel is going to take over as the interim head coach, completely different personality when it comes to the way he leads the team. And this is going to be welcome. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful for those two key pieces on the offense to have an opportunity to be relevant for the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, there is a, there is a, a reality here of a group of human beings that have not necessarily been enjoying their work environment. I mean, that is, you know, they're all, they're playing football, but these guys have not been right. enjoying the process and having that relief going into work, feeling like you've got new life. I agree with you. And I, I literally changed my pick from the Houston Texans winning the game to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Cause I believe that, you know, that we see this a lot when coaches change, there's a, a pep in the step. So fantasy wise, um, hopefully Marvin Jones can, can get it going, but I, I have much more confidence in James Robinson. So we'll talk more during the matchup about that. Some other news tonight's game, Austin oh, Eckler, man. the report that we have, um, again, this is not, you know, the be all end all. So I don't want to over emphasize it, but NFL networks, Taylor, uh, Bishotti reported Austin Eckler won't get a full workload experiencing more soreness than originally expe expected. The question I have for you two is I am facing Austin Eckler. Should I be actually happy about that? I, uh, you should not be happy that you're facing Austin Eckler. I think he's going to have a good game. Mike? I'm very concerned. Yeah, See, but if you're I, a fantasy I, player, you can't bench him. Yeah, that's, I don't want uh, – I am not throwing panic flags in the street. If I have Austin Eckler on my team, I'm playing him. I just – this is a really – unfortunate situation that uh and i get like i personally have ptsd because this is the chargers again it's the playoffs again and it's a completely unrelated situation but there's <laughs> but it's the chargers and last year keenan allen declared don't sit me and i did not sit him uh, and he caught like a pass. Yeah, he basically didn't even play to to start off the the fantasy playoffs, and it was brutal. This is, um, I mean, I I know that those other running backs on the team are going to see the field. Yeah, and I know that they're missing that first round pick, Rashawn Slater, for this game. So, and I know that the Chiefs have been very very good in the recent history against the run. They're missing pieces as well, so you can't sit him. But I would, you know, you're going into this game. You were hoping with enthusiasm. I think you go in with trepidation with Eckler on your team, and you you should be, you know, I don't think you're going to get the very best from him tonight. Yeah, I tend to agree. Cardinals wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is going to miss the rest of the season. They hope to get him back in the playoffs. Come on, man. I don't think they'll get him back in the playoffs. No. He's undergoing <laughs> surgery. I've thought a lot about the implications fantasy-wise in this situation. And I've gotten to the place where it might be different than you guys. I I don't think you can recommend a single other option um, over an over another one. So AJ Green, Christian Kirk, Rondale Moore, Zach Ertz, they're all going to, and Chase Edmonds. They're all going to bear the they're they're going to broadly receive all of the targets that that DeAndre Hopkins gets. It wasn't. You know, we've seen Hopkins off the field for three games, I think, earlier this year. And it wasn't like you could just lock somebody else in and guarantee yourself huge production. So I don't have confidence that, you know, A.J. Green's going to put up 100 yards every week. I don't have confidence sure. that, that Zach Ertz is going to necessarily be an upper echelon tight end. And so, you know, I know Jason yesterday, he said he liked Kirk more than A.J. Green. Yeah, I, I think Kirk is his youth, his athleticism, and while while you, yes, you're right, Hopkins missed three weeks earlier, and there wasn't anybody that stepped up. Well, those are the exact same three weeks you didn't have Kyler. We have not yet seen Kyler Murray without Hopkins, and who steps up? I I think someone has to. I I do think the offense still continues to score points. Maybe it's AJ Green. I agree with your take that. It, I just don't, we don't recommend know one for over another. Sure. Yeah, I, if if you want AJ Green, go AJ Green. I would prefer Christian Kirk, but I think both are are fine flex options. I, yeah, I think it just it, 
it rises the tide for all of them of you being able to feel more confident like in all of the options. DeAndre Hopkins on the season it w- was averaging a 20% target share. So, I mean, like he was hot and cold in terms of would he see all the targets in one particular game because this offense is spreading the ball out. But now those targets have to be spread out even further. So I think I think all options, like A.J. Green is elevated. Christian Kirk is elevated. I really hope Arizona figures out a way to unlock Rondale more, but I don't feel confident in playing him, at least for this week, unless you see something drastically change. I know you said Kyler was out. It, it kind of illustrates my point in weeks 9, 10, and 11 when Hopkins was out. Kirk was wide receiver 16. Cool. Awesome. You're the guy. Wide receiver 32. All right. Yeah, you're relevant. Wide receiver 69. Nice. So not nice. That's kind of it's hard because you know, you don't have a bench that can pick up all these guys. So you have to pick one. Yeah. And then do you I I didn't have the confidence. Like I'm not picking up AJ Green to play him over some of the other options out there. I'm not going to go play him over Devontae Smith. I'm not going to play him over Jamison Crowder. I'm not going to play him oh, over okay. I'm not going to play him over Gabe Davis. I that's just where I got with it. But. I would off the top of my head here I don't know what my I don't know what my rankings say but my gut reaction is I would play AJ Green over all those guys. Michael Carter designated to return from IR. We'll see what happens. Malcolm Brown as well. Tony Pollard listed as DNP on Wednesday. We had we had heard a report that he was planning on practicing. He didn't. Javante Williams. Did you guys hear this late yesterday? Yes, I did. Limited on Wednesday due to a knee. It's a new injury, but no concern from beat writers. Still something that you want to be yep, pay paying attention. attention to because he was out uh, touched by Melvin Gordon last week. Uh, no practice for DeAndre Swift or TJ Hawkinson on Wednesday. What now? <laughs> Doesn't sound overly optimistic for either to play. What is going on in Detroit? It's back and forth. It's like a pendulum. Come on, they, man. They just look at the day of the week and say it's the opposite of whatever yesterday was. Um, yeah, you have to plan to be without them just like you were last week, so you were probably already a little bit prepared, and hopefully they can play. Lamar Jackson didn't practice. We'll see what happens. Jalen Hurts, limited. Gardner getting half of the first-team reps in case Hurts cannot go. I can tell you right now that Hurts was originally going to be my start of the week. He's not. Uh, due to concerns that even if he plays – the recovery from the ankle sprain may limit the mobility and the ceiling. Josh Allen limited on Wednesday with the foot sprain, no concern from the team. And then uh, Terry McLaurin and J.D. McKissick both did not practice on Wednesday. We really need to monitor Terry McLaurin heading into the week. Yeah, I would be I would be expecting and prepared to be without him. Yeah, I, I would as well. And McKissick to me was someone that I thought would be a really good pickup if McLaurin is out. But if he's still not practicing, he's got to progress through the concussion protocol. I would also add... Um, if McLaurin's out, who's the... Are you taking a shot with DeAndre Carter or, or Curtis Samuel? Or what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, I think... I, I, Ricky Seals-Jones. Ricky Seals-Jones becomes very interesting. I think Sims is on the COVID list. Uh, we, we should vet that really quick. Uh, but Carter would be... Like, I'm not playing Carter in like a redraft, but in a DFS situation, DeAndre Carter becomes interesting as yeah. kind of the last man standing. And, and the matchup for Ricky Seals Jones is outstanding, and he yes. becomes uh, more necessary and one week further removed from the injury. So that's good. I would Have add. Have you seen these snap counts for Curtis Samuel since the quote unquote return? He's he's 21%. I would be surprised if he plays this week. He's super hurt. I mean, he is, he's his, in, with the same injury with the groin. So I did not think he would be an option on the field this week. Yeah. I'll also confirmed, Cam Sims is on the COVID list from yesterday. Man, they don't have anybody. They don't. To the tune of, like, I, I really like Ricky Seals-Jones, but I want them to get a couple of pieces so <laughs> right. the whole defense can't just, like, play five guys on it. And Kyle it, Allen went on the COVID list, so, yeah. and Taylor Heineke's hurt, but probably will play. It's not looking great. Yeah. Elijah uh, Mitchell, concussion knee, did not practice on Wednesday, running back for the 49ers. If Mitchell sits again, which yesterday in the office we're kind of speculating here, obviously, but you know, if he's out on Wednesday because of the concussion, then I don't think he plays this week. And if it's not the concussion, that means the knee is significant enough not to practice a week later. Yeah, I I, I am currently expecting Elijah Mitchell to be out. Um, I, I don't think he plays this week, and Jeff Wilson has a great matchup, but you need to understand that the floor is very low because he's not the third down guy. 
and he's not even the guarantee for the touchdown. He's not uh, even the two-minute guy. <clears throat> yeah, so... Juszczyk was out there on all third downs and Jermichael Hasty and Debo around the goal line. I could see him having a great game. I do think he'll touch the ball close to 15 times, um, but the floor is... is We've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's low. And also, monitor Leonard Fournette. <clears throat> he missed... Excuse yeah, he you. missed practice due to an ankle? Uh, yes, an ankle injury, and that is new. He has not missed a Wednesday practice this year. He has not been on the injury report, so at least Just pay attention because out. Ronald Jones is a good player if something happens. That was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper. Grab the app, subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel faster than every other source. And Foot Clan, before we get into the forecast, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp they are here to assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It is not self-help. It is professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in your area. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist You'll get that timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone ses sessions. You don't have to sit in the uncomfortable waiting room like you do with traditional therapy. Uh, I highly recommend BetterHelp. Been reached out to by several listeners saying, "What? What was that? What was that sponsor?" And like, BetterHelp. So, get on it. Like, it's okay. It's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to go seek help for uh, the problems that you're dealing with. Visit BetterHelp.com slash footballers. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for the Fantasy Footballers listeners. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, you ever feel like you're being followed around the internet? Whoa, whoa. Oh, Maybe okay. advertisers know a bit too much about you. Somebody's you, watching you, me. You want to lock that down? Well, IP Vanish, they are a VPN that can help you take back your privacy, become anonymous on the internet. That's a virtual private network, a VPN for short. You can use a VPN on your computers, on your tablets, on your phones, uh, even your, your streaming devices like your Fire Stick. And when you... When you use a VPN, all of your data is encrypted. Um, it's 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 safe. If you're on one of the free Wi-Fi's, keep it secret. Keep it secret. Keep it keep safe. It safe. Uh, for listeners of the show, IP Vanish, they're offering 65% off their annual plan. It is easy to use. It's a click of the button to turn it on, click of the button to turn it off. They have 24/7 support, and you can go to ipvanish.com/footballers to get the 65% savings. Annual plan is just 44.99 for the first year with our discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off the usual offering. IP Vanish, they're the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com/footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. All right, week 15 matchups. Let's begin. This week is rough. There's a lot of low point totals and a lot of big favorites and a lot of COVID yeah. mayhem going on, including this matchup. The Las Vegas Raiders, 6-7. and seven. Stand corrected. The wheels have fallen off. Uh, <laughs> at the Cleveland Browns, 7-6. and six. We're out of control. Guys, the DraftKings Sportsbook line right now, the Las Vegas Raiders on the road are now one-point favorites. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. The over-under is 38 and a half. <laughs> also so makes you sense. have a disgusting <laughs> over-under. Uh, you have some possible rain in this one. Uh, they played a weather game last year. It was 16 to 6 in that game. You saw last week the Browns couldn't even move the ball in the second half, barely survived. Now you have a significant amount of players that will potentially miss this game due to COVID. I'm going to throw them out there. Jarvis Landry's on the COVID list. Austin Hooper is on the COVID list. Baker Mayfield is on the COVID list. And it's a mess. I mean, on offense, it's going to be a mess for the Browns. It is a mess uh, for the NFL. 
But I think this game is very easy for fantasy football. Let's let's hear it. Like Josh Jacobs, he's in. He mm-hmm. is. He's been consistent. He is not giving you like weak winning performances, but he has been very safe, especially with the they finally, finally after years getting him involved in the passing game. So he's a running back too. Hunter Renfro is <laughs> this locked, dude is just a, locked in. This guy is a super stud, especially especially when Darren Waller is not on the field. And Waller did not practice on Wednesday. He is not likely to play. Uh, and cause this is a Saturday game. Re- remember, there are two games on Saturday. So that's an easy situation. On the Browns side, Nick Chubb every single week. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, to me, as the last man standing, he's not ju- he's not just a, a necessary guy. Like, he's good. Like, he is a, he's a capable deep threat. I think he will... Uh, he will see some some decent target volume last week, five for ninety, but seven targets. Like he is he is truly the wide receiver two now, the wide receiver one this week for this team. So I think he is worth a flex play. And then, like, do you are you willing to roll with David and Joku? That's my biggest question for this matchup for both sides of the ball. My answer is a definitive yes, assuming he is activated from the COVID list, which okay. I expect to happen because Austin Hooper will likely miss this game. Harrison Bryant, Correct. who you might have turned to to take some of those snaps, has been very banged up, didn't play in week 14. And you talk about a last-man-standing approach. You talk about Case Keenum behind center with a full chub behind him, as, he, as he said. Mm-hmm. That's it. His, words, his words. His words. His words. And the, hey, Kareem Hunt's not going to play either. So Njoku is very interesting because he's an athletic Agreed. tight end who can take a – so, you know, one of those dump offs is going to turn into a 20, 30 yard run. And that's not what you could have re- expected from Hooper. So I, I do think there's upside there. You're at home. You're playing a team that struggles against the tight end position. So, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think if he is activated and obviously it's possible he's not even available for the game, but assuming he is, which is the is the hope and expectation, I, I, I think I would play him probably more than I would play Donovan Peoples Jones just because of the position. David and Joku twenty hours ago said it's good to be back. Yeah. Okay. So he's back as he was uh, back from back. the COVID nineteen list. So he is officially back from the list. Well, that's that's what he says. Well, if he says he's going to be back, there's always rules about like the day you can yeah. do that. But um, he Are already you, missed a week. Do you do you guys think that uh, Dearness Johnson is one of those primary stashes over the weekend with Cream Hunt's injury? Like, sure. With, with Cream Hunt out, Dearness hasn't seen very many opportunities per game so I don't think you can play him uh with Nick Chubb still there but are yeah. he, is he someone that you're throwing he, on the bench he's a very valuable insurance running back for sure and I I do think Chubb has a super bounce back week the last two games for him have been very disappointing I think he has a Jonathan Taylor-esque game here because the Raiders have not been able to stop the run um so I yeah. I hope you're not playing against Chubb I do think it's interesting though I mean obviously the line is the Raiders are favorites and it's the lowest over under of the year so I wouldn't expect a lot of points uh in the game overall but we'll see how it shakes out the New England Patriots let's move on to that game nine and four Patriots travel to Indianapolis they take on a Colts team that has played very well and the Colts are favored two and a half points according to the DraftKings Sportsbook the over under is 40 46 points you know, Indianapolis started one and four. They won six. They've won six of their last eight games. New England started two and four, and they've won seven straight. They are, like Arizona, undefeated on the road. And I'm excited to see what happens in this game. But there are some murky situations that I'm I'm certainly worried about. You know, when you look at New England, you have this kind of uh, contrast between scoring a ton of points, but then not necessarily knowing a, a pass catcher to start for them on a weekly basis. And you have Damian Harris, who's been limited a couple days this week, has the hamstring injury, had the bye week. But how healthy is he? And then how can you can you flex Ramondre on the road? These are the questions that come to mind on the Patriots side of the ball. And I, what would you guys do with the running back situation? I, I do think that this game will have a lot of fantasy relevance, especially when looking at the slate of all the games this week. Um, I So I, I want to start pieces in this game. I think I would be willing to start both Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson. I think that they are fine options. Both should be if involved. If you had both, though? If I had both, I would start Damian Harris. Okay. 
Um, you know, so on the receiving work, I mean, you're really taking a shot at Kendrick Bourne, who was hot before, you know, you, you throw the out the wind game. Yeah, you throw out the last game. There, it was impossible for any receiving option to do anything. Um, delete that. So Kendrick Bourne would be the guy I think you can take a shot on. But r really, I, I don't want the passing game on that side because it's very efficient and effective. It moves the chains. But they don't throw a lot of touchdowns. They don't score through the air, um, and I, you know, I think that the the fantasy value is going to come on the ground for New England. It's very difficult when you look at how good the Patriots' defense has been. Number one against quarterbacks and wide receivers in the last six weeks. It's difficult to look at Michael Pittman and say, "Hey, I've got confidence playing him," even though they're at home. Even though there's a likelihood that you know the forty six point over under is not not bad. It just feels scary. I yeah. agree. Uh, my hope for Pittman, and we had a we had a question on Green Room last night where he was the easy sit because there were four good options. And when you look at this matchup, you say, okay, I'm I'm not to the point where I have to start Michael Pittman every single week. But he is he is he has been solid. The targets have been there. Um, and the hope here is New England is famous for taking away your number one option, and there's no doubt what the number one option is here. They are going to sell their soul to stop Jonathan Taylor. I don't think they're going to be able to do it necessarily, um, but that's where their focus will be, and that could open up things in the passing game for Pittman. So he, is, he isn't a must bench to me. Um, right. Van Jefferson against Seattle or, or Pity City? I would go Van if Odell Beckham remains out, and otherwise I would go Pity. Are you going to go with Devontae Parker against the New York Jets or Michael Pittman? I think I'll go Michael Pittman. Are you going to go Brandon Ayuk against the Atlanta Falcons? I Ayuk. Okay. Interesting. All right. It's it's a very tough decision. Yeah. Carolina, 5-8, and eight, taking on the 7-6 and six Buffalo Bills, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 11. The over-under is 44. So you hear that over-under, you say, hey, that's a, low, that's a low one, but 28 of those points are the Bills. So Vegas not expecting – the Bills to have trouble in this game. Yeah, well, what if Sam Darnold is back? Vegas then not start, expecting. Start your <laughs> Bills defense. I mean, does the line get bigger or smaller? Uh, Carolina oh, started the no. year 3-0. and We talked about this last oh. week. They're 2-8 and since then. They're desperate. That's the best word to describe the Panthers. That desperation has led to uh, multiple quarterbacks shuffling in and out based on the whims of Matt Rule. Which, as an hour ago... Panthers quarterback Sam Darnold, he, he is designated to return, so he will be back. But as of an hour ago, he's still not yet cleared for contact. So I mean, not this week. It, it makes it so difficult to really recommend a single Panther because, you know, I'd like to say that there's a real opportunity for Robbie Anderson in this game where, you know, DJ Moore has been limited with a hamstring injury. Robbie Anderson's been pretty good, but you're, this is just a brutal matchup. Yeah, it's a brutal matchup against a great defense. You know, you're not you have 16 implied points for the Panthers, and so you know Chuba is a desperation play. Would you play? Would you in the same matchup? Would you prefer Chuba, who is just he's the grinder, he is the first and second down back, or would you go with Amir Abdullah, who is their passing downs guy? I would go with neither. Yeah, I would. Go uh, with that neither. was not the question. But I think it's the right answer. I think that. <laughs> if Devin, you, so you, I'd go with Devin Singletary. Yeah, exactly. On the other side of the ball, someone that you know he he looked good last week. Did not get a lot of opportunities on the ground. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you can go down to Devin Singletary and put him in the lineup, I, I this is the playoff time. I have to imagine you've got better options than Chuba or Amir Abdullah. If I had to start one of them, I would personally put Chuba in because he's first up. Where are you with Josh Allen? The, you know, he claims that the, the foot is fine. So, are you worried at all, or do you think this is a big week for Josh Allen? I'm never, I'm never gonna bench Josh Allen. But are you concerned at this point of the week? He is my quarterback three on the week. Okay. So no. <laughs> Stephon Diggs, right. you always play him, and then if you're looking for value, then it, you turn to Cole Beasley and Gabriel Davis uh, as chain movers in this offense. Somebody. Outside of Stephon Diggs, Dawson Knox, I think you can have great confidence in him. He's leading all tight ends in touchdowns. And so you have that rapport, Panthers middle of the road against tight ends. You like Gabe Davis or Cole Beasley more in a half point? In a half point, I would take 
Gabriel Davis. I think that uh, the opportunity he will be given with Emmanuel Sanders out should be good. Um, he's been used around the goal line. He's a bigger body guy who can get downfield. In a full PPR, um, I would take Cole Beasley just because more peppered closer to the line is P possible. I mean, he did, he had nine for 64 this past week, but that was also Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills trying to mount a heroic comeback where they were uh, down for essentially the entire game. But before that, three targets, five, five. Cole Beasley has not been the consistent PPR floor player that we had last year. Uh, and so I I think even a full-point PPR, I would go with Gabe Davis, just go for the, the ceiling. Because I think the chance that both Cole and uh, uh, Gabe Davis see the very similar target volume, I think that's a high probability. So I'll take the, the more valuable downfield shots. Arizona, 10-3, and three, taking on the Detroit Lions, who are 1-11-1. Oh, palindrome team. Now it's an official palindrome. Yeah, there you I, go. It was pointed out that yes. it was not one, even though I was just considering the middle to be a singular number. But, oh, but see, that's not how it works. Though. I know, I know. One, 11, and one. We did it. I'm we glad did your it. anagrams are better than your palindromes. <laughs> oh, yes, they are. <laughs> uh, well, DraftKings has Arizona as 12-point favorites. The over-under is 47. That gives Arizona almost 30 points. Detroit is at 17 and a half. Is this line extremely recent? Do you know, Al? Can somebody vet this I'll line? I am just curious if the Hopkins news, I mean, you doubt it would move it much with the matchup. Minus 13. No, oh, it's gotten better. <laughs> I wonder if that came more with the DeAndre Swift Hawkinson news that it would go to minus 13. But you do have a juicy matchup, but you do have some question marks. James Conner injured on the last, the second to last play of the game. I think he's going to be out. Chase Edmonds likely to return. No DeAndre Hopkins. We talked about it at the top of the show. So, you know, you're playing Kyler Murray. Are you playing Chase Edmonds with confidence if he's active? Yes, well, yes. He has been fantastic on the ground, very efficient. Um, and the the thing holding Chase Edmonds back has been James Conner taking all the touchdowns. If And that role, I can't imagine they – just say, well, that role is not for Chase, so Eno Benjamin's going to be our dude when we get up to the goal line. That uh, won't happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I think that Chase Edmonds is essentially a, a three-down uh, workhorse in this matchup. And on the season, the Lions are 30th against fantasy running backs. This <laughs> this has been a – 30th. I want to emphasize how, how bad the, the Lions defense has been against running backs. So, yeah, I if Chase is back – look, honestly – if Ch if Chase I want to know back, what you do if, if if Connor plays because he didn't practice Wednesday. That's not surprising. They played on Monday Night Football. They've reported him as day to day, so you you still need to monitor this for the next two days. But let's right. say he plays. Oh man, are you playing Connor if he plays? If James uh. Connor is active in the game against the Detroit Lions, I am playing James Connor. Period. Um, so both are. Both are options, regardless of who's in or out. I think so. If if they are active against the Lions, there are a lot of points here implied for the Cardinals, and it's not going to be Hopkins scoring them. So I I think that the ground game will work against the Lions. Um, I I I wouldn't fear starting either. Okay, but right. but again, I I I currently early in the week don't think James Conner is going to be there. And over the last six weeks, the Lions are. 28th against fantasy tight end so Zach Ertz is definitely in play I'm I'm playing the like we we talked a little bit about the wide receivers already for the Cardinals so I'm I'm playing Christian Kirk and AJ Green as a wide receiver three even though the the concern would be they just don't need them uh, <laughs> the ball just uh, the running backs do all the work Zach Ertz catches a few passes here or there but I'm still gonna play them do you play any Detroit Lions of any so, of any kind? Is so, it the Craig Reynolds show? Because that here's my concern. Yeah, that's scary. Here's my concern with Reynolds. Is that last week was more a result of hot hand than it was plan, and so he had a hot hand and he and he got some snaps and he got some carries, but they have other options in the backfield beyond Craig Reynolds, Jamar Jefferson, so and who who was recovering from an injury. Right. So my concern is that that was not as prescriptive as maybe some would hope. I mean, uh, that's 
at this point on a Thursday, you got to watch what the team is saying about these running backs. I would probably avoid maybe maybe throw Craig into like a, a DFS lineup or something like that. But in your playoffs, I would avoid them. The one player I'm interested in, Amon Ross St. Brown, the Detroit Lions, their their rookie wide receiver over the last five weeks has seen a twenty six percent target share, and that includes thirty two percent of the targets each of the last two weeks. Twelve targets apiece in those. Like that's an that's an interesting volume that I can you really deny that? Maybe. Okay. That's that's, that's the, what I'm saying. It's interesting. I let me just I I've done this. Eight targets in week four, eight targets in week five, seven targets in week six, and I, that got me. Three weeks. <laughs> you were in. With the tight. And then he followed it up with zero targets, zero receptions on 62% of snaps. So I, I'm just going to throw that hesitation out there. Eight is not 12. 12 is a lot of targets. He's also a young rookie who you have every reason to believe is part of their future. And look, but I would be scared. I totally get that. But look at his on-field snaps since week 11. It, he hit 85%. That was his highest of the season. And then he was at 98% the next two weeks. Denver, that was, if you remember, it was only it was back down to 75% of the snaps. But again, he still saw 12 targets in that game. And they were getting just shellacked in that one. Uh, so I don't blame the coaching staff for not playing St. Brown the entire game. Jason, where are in you? Out. I, I'm I'm pretty much out on Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he is fine for a DFS slate, but in the playoffs, you've got better options. Everybody we talked about today, Michael Pittman, bad matchup. I'm I'm not starting Amon Ra over someone like that. Okay. And I think that playoff teams probably don't need to scoop all the way down to Amon Ross St. Brown. I think there are but I would much rather play AJ Green um than Amon Ra on you know in, in this same game. And I, I do think Craig Reynolds, assuming that Jamal Williams is not active, will be the dude. Um I I think I, w I would start him ahead of Chuba. Would you play Amon Ra St. Brown or Jerry Judy against the Cincinnati Bengals? Wait, why are we doing this on a playoff show? Because people actually have poo these to questions. Poo. That's poo to poo. People got to make big decisions, man. I play Jerry Judy. Jerry, I, Jerry Judy. <laughs> oh, man. I would, I would chase the volume of St. Brown. I'm, I'm chasing Jerry Judy's name. It's, it's Amon Ra St. Brown. Yeah. Yeah, I switch. All right. Are you ready for the goose? I'd, the New York certainly. Jets at 3-10 and 10 take on the 6-7 and seven Miami Dolphins who have been playing some good football, and they are 9.5-point home favorites. The over-under is 41. It gives the Jets just 16 points. They're arguably one of the worst defenses in NFL history. The Jets, since 2000, rank 696th out of 702 teams in points allowed. Breaking news. Oh, no. Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddell is oh, going on COVID reserve list. I would now Crap. choose Devontae Parker in the former question. Crap. Wow. Oh, come on. That's that's brutal, man. They're like, there's, this, are, there's we been knew a that lot there were going to be more. There, there's been a lot of them, but that's the worst one by far. So that sucks. If you have Waddle, I'm very sorry. Wow. That's, but Devontae Parker now becomes yeah. an incredible well, player. And Mike Gesicki. And, Gesicki Mike Gesicki is going to be Gesicki's back, man. force fed. The, he might be on your waiver wire. And honestly, I mean, this is all just you know visceral reaction here. But Gesicki might be worth like a, a flex play. If you already have a solid tight end and you have Waddle and there's nothing on your wire, Gesicki. How many tar like Gasicki should see eight plus targets now? Yeah, I, I, he's he's I think, vanished. I think you're right. He's vanished because of the emergence of Jalen. They don't Waddle. even have any running backs. Oh my gosh, boo! This is uh, I'm reacting in real time here, thinking about the implications, thinking about what I think of Tua, who may or may not be part of the right. later part of this show. I do think that Gasicki is in play as as a you know, um, if if you're looking for a tight end and he is on your waivers that's great I would not move him to the point of flex he's of, he's had a lot of um high target games in the past where if he doesn't get in the end zone I I think you're still going to kind of be disappointed with him as a flex but at tight end he should be good uh, before that breaking news for this game I was literally saying that the Jets are one of the worst defenses in the history of the NFL yeah so 25 and a half points that's what DraftKings has them at 
Someone's got to do it. I mean, Miles Gaskins on the COVID list, along with Ahmed and Lindsey. Malcolm w- Brown designated a return. And Gas it, it, is Gas- Gaskin going to play or not? That's what, what I was going to say. Gaskin was put on last week, so there is a he could still be back. And if he is if he is back, then yeah, I'm going to play Miles Gaskin. But let's because we're in this matchup, let's play the flow chart. Let's say all three of those guys are are out. Malcolm Brown ends up coming back. With the, so then it would be him and Duke Johnson as the running backs on this team. Are you taking that matchup? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I would do it over Craig Reynolds. Yeah, okay. I, I and I would, I would Mike as well. Davis. Okay, I I hope that by the end of the week there is clarity between Malcolm Brown and Duke Johnson. Um, like Malcolm Brown's back practicing, but he's not active for the game because he's not ready yet. That would be great for fantasy. Duke Johnson would be um, a very good play. Then would you take? Uh, one of those two Miami guys or Daryl Williams against the Los Angeles Chargers? I would take one of these guys. Okay. I'd like the volume in the world's greatest matchup for running backs. Mm. It's, yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, I just – I told you guys yesterday, I don't know whether to chase the snaps that Daryl's getting or the opportunities that he's not. Right. Because he's been so explosive. I, I'm so afraid of making a mistake with Daryl Williams tonight. Like He's going to end up on my bench for some other options. But I'm going to, I'll die inside when <laughs> when that a touchdown. when that swing pass for 62 yards and a touchdown happens tonight. I'm going to lose it. So, um, would you go with uh one of the one of the Miami guys again? Flow chart. It's down to Malcolm Brown and Duke. Would you go with one of them or Devin Singletary against Carolina? I, I'd go with the Miami guy if I knew it was Malcolm Brown. Okay. Yeah. If there's clarity. So Jalen Waddle COVID list. Devontae Parker. He's in, man. Yeah, he has a great opportunity. Average. Mike Gesicki, we talked about it. On the other side, I, you know, I'd love to endorse Jamison Crowder the way I did last week. That's an area where Miami struggles. Yes, he's last man standing with the injuries. No Corey Davis, no J- um, no Elijah Moore, but it was grotesque last week. <laughs> and you know, Braxton Berrios is on the field. Some you have. Jamison Crowder on 91% of snaps giving you three for 19, and he's not a big play guy. So the way the defense is playing for Miami, I'm just afraid of of making that. I'm not do I have him in multiple leagues. I'm not playing him. Okay. I think I'm that, making the AJ Green decision over that. I'm making a Marvin Jones decision over Jamison Crowder. That's just what I'm doing. I think that's the right decision. We we haven't really seen Jamison Crowder do special things with Zach Wilson. Uh, that's just the reality. If they're not in sync, if he's throwing to Braxton Berrios, regardless of snaps and routes run, we just we haven't seen it yet, and I don't want to go in the playoffs thinking this is going to be the first time we really see something special. Are you messing with any Jets running backs against the number one ranked defense against the run over the last six? No. no. That makes it easier. We yeah. don't even have to say the names. Uh, it, well, the name to be said is Michael Carter because he's designated to return. He still has to be activated, but – with the matchup and not knowing 100% in your first week of the playoffs that he will go back to being the guy, I think you have to bench him. Dallas at 9-4, and four take uh, they take on the 4-9 Giants. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas, 11-point road favorites. It's a palindrome. Yeah, it is. And um, you mean like when you combine them? 9-4 and four and 4-9? Four and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, over-under is 44. Dallas is uh, in position to wrap up the NFC East. If they win and Philly beats Washington, it's over. Dak, it's a great start. The opportunity looks um, outstanding on the road here in New York for Dak, for Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb. They're locked in. Um, Dalton Schultz has only been a tight end one once in the last seven weeks. I would be recommending a pivot away from Dalton Schultz. Oh, the doctor? The doctor's been out, brother. Uh, doctors take a lot of vacations. I mean, they, <laughs> so I, I think he is having a good time on vacation, but I would agree there are better options. You know, Kasiki might be on your waiver wire. Pick him up. Play Njoku him. or Dalton Schultz? I would play Njoku. I would. I think I would go the doctor there. We are famous for our uh, tight, oh, end, our, tight our end water bets. tight end water bets. Can we do Give it? Give me the doctor. Water bet. What percent of that start, Jason, is the fact that you were the one who coined the doctor nickname? 46%. Okay. All right. I, I, hey, just look. 
Own it. Be honest. Mm-hmm. The matchup for Zeke on paper looks great. People want permission to bench him, however, based on the way he's been playing. He hasn't been over 50 yards on the ground. But you're going to get 15 opportunities against a 26-ranked run defense with a limited or inactive Tony Pollard. And Zeke, the words from his mouth, I feel better than I felt all week. Yeah. He was boy. wearing a brace last week. Bull batootie. Yeah, he's um, told us the whole time the injury's not a yeah, problem. Yeah, he's uh, at 100%. He was limping everywhere on the you field. You can't bench him. No, you cannot bench him. He is a good play. I don't think he's a top five guy. But the last two weeks, 16 opportunities and 18 opportunities. They, he Now, he had those opportunities and did nothing with them, but that was against the New Orleans Saints, still a great run defense, and the Washington football team who's turned their defense around. The you Giants, need a goal line opportunity. You, you need a goal Z. line opportunity, absolutely. But against the 25th ranked uh, Giants, you get 15 opportunities. You're not going to bench Zeke. Zeke My, or, or Sony Michelle against the Seattle Seahawks. Zeke. Zeke or James Robinson against the Houston Texans? James Robinson. The answer is Sony if Daryl Henderson doesn't play. Sure. I, I guess I'm seeing Henderson as active. Let me um, ask you one, Mike. Michael Gallup targets over the last four games, 10, 8, 9, 9. Amon Ross St. Brown or Michael Gallup in this game? Ooh. A little uh, target battle for you. Yeah. To me, it's Gallup. To me, I'll, I'll take Gallup. Gallup is a good wide receiver has one of the better quarterbacks in the league, so I'll chase that stuff. You yep. agree, Jay? Yep. On the other side of the ball, Saquon and no one else? Is that is it that simple? Yeah, you got to monitor. Uh, he he was non-participant Wednesday. I I think that that is probably expected, um, but just make sure you're monitoring on Thursday if uh, if he's had any, you know, injury mm-hmm. aggravation. Yeah, Kenny Galladay can't trust it. I mean, maybe uh, it, Sterling Shepard would be the one I would want to play of any of them, uh, but that's not a ringing endorsement. It's going to be Mike Glennon. It might even be Jake Fromm. A little bit of Jake yeah. mixed in there. Yes. The Washington Football Team at six and seven takes on the six and seven Philadelphia Eagles. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Philadelphia minus seven. The over under forty four points. Washington. We talked about it early in the show. They are decimated, injured. Taylor Heineke might play. Injured, Terry McLaurin might play. I don't want to play him. Yeah. The Eagles' defense has been great against wideouts. McLaurin's been – this is a must-bench Terry McLaurin week, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. There's Like, I will go way down the list. I don't think um, that he will play in this game. If he plays, I will not play him. Like, he, he, is, he is unplayable, for sure. Full Be- goose last week, right? Yep, full goose last week. Then he got injured. And I, I think he is very injured. So if he's if he's playing injured against uh you know the season long top three against wide receiver Philadelphia Eagles, no thank you. Yeah, I agree. And so if he's out, you could shoot your shot on one of their other options. But no oh, thank you. I don't think you should. Ricky Seals Jones is a good play. It wasn't good last week, but the the process is they need a pass catcher. He's had important games this year. Yeah, Philadelphia dead last the last six weeks and on the season against uh, fantasy tight ends. If Jalen Hurts starts, do you start him? He's at home, they're favored? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay, and then if Gardner starts, do you start him? I think you can. Um, you know, two quarterback leagues, um, he he looked good. He can scramble. Uh, he was using Dallas Goddard well around the goal line, so I, I think he's a fine. Gardner or Derek Carr Go- against the Cleveland Browns? Gardner. Gardner or Ben Roethlisberger against the Tennessee Titans? Oh, Roethlisberger. Okay. The question that I have for you is, is what do you do with Devontae Smith, who is you know, by far their most athletic and talented weapon in the passing game? He had a, uh, a back-to-back run of, of top 10 weeks at the wide receiver position, but it's been bad the last two, one of them with Gardner. That being said... I believe Quez Watkins is out for the year now. He had received some of the uh, targets in this offense. Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith seem like the only two options in a game where they're projected for 25 points. 
Yeah, th those would be the two. I, I think that um, you've got more confidence in Goddard simply because he's a tight end and there are fewer options. Devonta Smith I, has a high ceiling. I could see him coming out and having a seven for 100 and a touchdown. So when you have someone that can do that, they're always in the conversation. But his floor is really two for, you know, 29 if wide variance you've got to look at your matchup say do I need the shot at a strong player because he does have that opportunity or do I want a safer option I should win this week I'd rather you know go in there and play someone that maybe doesn't have the same athletic talent or isn't first on their team but has more workload Quez is on the COVID list yeah and okay. will be out this week Dallas Goddard was six for 105 and two with Gardner it would be a boost to his value if Gardner was behind center, but it wouldn't change whether I play Goddard. Dallas Goddard with Jalen Hurts or Mike Gesicki. I'm going to stay with Goddard. Okay. Because he, he dominated, like you said, with Gardner, but before that, it's been since week eight that he was a tight end one. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, let's do our starts. <laughs> Starts of the week. I uh, I will go back to the matchup for a second. Since we talked about it yesterday, but if you didn't hear the show, we're avoiding the backfield situation right now for Philadelphia because that's why. Yes. Okay. So you just. I mean, it, it, are you playing Malcolm Brown over shooting your shot at a Philadelphia Eagle? If uh, if Brown is active, I would probably play Miles over those guys. What if Miles is out? Uh, Who's I, next man up? Is it Jordan, Jordan Howard? To me, it's Jordan Howard. Yeah, to me, I don't know, so I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play the gamble game in the playoffs. All right, I will kick it off at the start of the week. My quarterback got a bit of a, a surprise here with the removal of one of his best weapons, but I will stay with Tua Tungavailoa, who has been playing good football because the Jets are the single best matchup for quarterbacks over the last eight weeks. They're one of the worst defenses ever. We said it on the show today. This is a floor playoff play. If, if you have a situation, like I'd play Tua over Derek Carr, no questions asked. And so, um, you know, he threw for 273 and two against the Jets this year. Jets are allowing the highest completion rate and first down rate and yards per attempt and quarterback rating. And we don't know who the running back is. And, you know, Tua is going to have to do a, a lot of work. And, you know, it was funny. I saw a tweet the other day about how people are praising Mac Jones who has a pretty low yards per attempt this year because right. of all the, the success he's had. And Tua last year had a higher yards per attempt, and he was criticized as being a check down quarterback. Tua has matured in year two. Team's playing well. They have to go get out to a lead somehow, and I think Tua will get them there. Yeah, my it's, a, it's a deeper one. Sure. My start of the week at quarterback is Dak Prescott, someone that has been bad for the last couple of weeks for fantasy and not great on the road. He is on the road this week. Um, so there, there are, you know, reasons to maybe go, Oh man, should I play Dak? If he is on my team, I'm playing Dak. I'm not going to a streaming option. I'm not looking at, you know, an, an upside. I, I think Dak is a very good quarterback. The last time that he played the giants, he already roasted them 302 and three touchdowns in week five when the Cowboys demolished them 44 to 20, uh, over the last month, he's averaging 42 pass attempts per game and really when you look at Dak's fantasy value and whether it's good or bad, it's just did the touchdowns come in on the ground or through the air? And I don't think that this current version of Zeke and Pollard is the one that is going to score the majority of touchdowns in this game. So I like Dak to have a, a very good game in New York. And with all of my starts here, I'm trying to – maybe you limped into the playoffs, so I'm, I'm trying to give you uh, some players that I have confidence in that literally might be on your waiver wire – my quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo. They are nine. Last I checked, it was a nine and a half point favorites at home. That could be slightly different now, but that was an implied team total of 28 points. The Atlanta Falcons have been the second best quarterback matchup over the last five weeks. Toss on that. You get a little Kyle Shanahan revenge game. And look, the last week, the Falcons, they gave up top 12 production to the combo of Cam Newton and PJ Walker. If you want some confidence in Jimmy Garoppolo, who. On top of every like just the process of the matchup, Garoppolo has been pretty solid for fantasy football the last month. All right, my running back start of the week. I believe you've met my fitness consigliere, <laughs> Michelle. I'm going Sonny Michelle, regardless of the Daryl Henderson situation. I think 
Sean McVay has a thing for Sony Michelle, and I think that equates to uh, more than half the opportunities out of the backfield against a Seattle defense allowing the second most running back fantasy points in most plays per game. The offense, I think, showed us that they um, they have it together right now. You're not going to have Odell most likely in this game. 15 opportunities for Sony Michelle against Seattle is something you need to lean into. Yeah, if if he gets that. You like that, Al? Him. You like Sony Michelle, oh, Michelle endorsements? I agree with you. Sometimes opportunity exceeds talent. Mm. That is very <laughs> off-brand for you. Uh, I don't want to give bad advice. Uh, that's that's. But, that's but pride. What you but what give. about your pride? Um, I right. stand by that he still sucks. Okay. <laughs> at, at running back, I had this selected before the news of Urban Meyer, but James Robinson is a very questionable player on a lot of playoff teams. He helped get you there, and you're saying last week he only got six carries. He's a little banged up. Do I have to bench James Robinson? And I am telling you that in my leagues, I am starting James Robinson. I am pretty confident in it. The Urban Meyer leaving makes it all the better. You've got Trevor Lawrence begging for James Robinson to be on the field. He throws him the ball. The Texans are a great matchup. They've allowed the most rushing yards in the NFL, the most rushing uh, plays of 10 plus yards. So James Robinson is someone that should be in your lineup and I think is going to give you a good week. And Carlos Con Hyde in concussion protocol. I was about to say it. Yep. Uh, my running back start of the week. It's Deonta Foreman from the Tennessee Titans. He was the dude last week until he was no longer needed in the second half where they just turned to Jeremy McNichols. But up until that point, it was Foreman. He's the one who gets those uh, those touches inside the five. And the Steelers have collapsed against running backs. What I don't, is, what is happening? I do not know, but I know that I must take advantage of it for my fantasy situation. In the last five games, they've given up top 10 production in each of them to the running back position. And, and that includes... Top five production to running backs in four of the last five games. The Tennessee Titans, they have found their guy that they can stick with the Derrick Henry approach of run more than you throw. So I'm playing Deontay Foreman with confidence. Surprisingly, I'm going with Chase Claypool as my wide receiver start of the week. Yes. Yes. Since week 10, he's averaged 80 receiving yards per game. He hasn't found his way into the end zone. He has made mistakes on the field and yet – you know, was benched and still put up a pretty good game. Eight for 93. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. And um, the Titans are the second best wide receiver matchup on the year. Teams are throwing at the second highest rate against them. And he's due. He's due for a touchdown. He Yes. The, the regression of his yardage total versus his, his one receiving touchdown is absurd. He was double digits last year. Yes. Yeah, at uh, wide receiver, I'm going with Brandon Cooks um, against the Jacksonville okay. Jaguars. Davis Mills has actually been okay. He's been fine. He, he's maybe been the second best rookie quarterback. Possible. Um, last week, Cooks went eight for 101 on 11 targets. He saw his first red zone target in a month. He's got a 27% market share. He is the only thing working for the Texans, and he's a great player. Do you remember week one against these Jags? He went five for 132. The Jaguars are allowing the highest expected points added per pass attempt. I like Brandon Cooks in this matchup. Russell Gage is my start of the week. The, the San Francisco 49ers, it is the third best matchup for wide receivers over the last five games. Last week, it was disappointing with four for 64, but that was still 22% of the targets over the last month of games. Russell Gage is seeing 26% of the targets. So the volume plus the matchup has Russell Gage in play for me as a wide receiver three. Talked about it earlier. I'm going to go with David Njoku as your uh, surprise upside tight end play of the week. No Hooper, probably no Landry. That's a ton of targets. Probably no Harrison Bryant. We already know no Baker, so Case Keenum and David Njoku are going to be key to the passing game. Raiders bleed points to the tight end position, second most on the year. I think you can play him. And I'm going with Ricky Seals-Jones as my start of the week. Um, he should get on the field more <laughs> past uh, the injury. He He's so necessary. They just don't have anybody to throw the ball to. And the matchup, it's just what Mike said. This is opportunity and uh, the matchup play. Tight ends with big games against Philadelphia. Adam Troutman, Foster Moreau, Dalton Schultz, O.J. Howard, all top five. 
So I think Ricky Seals-Jones against the best matchup for tight ends is good. And I'm diving into the dumpster for my tight end streamer of the week, Nick Vanette from the New Orleans Saints. Yes, that's where he is over the last two weeks. Whoa. He is he is actually providing you a safe floor of at least three receptions and 40 yards, four and six targets. Tampa Bay, if they can be beat, it's at the tight end position. And did you, you hear, though? What did I hear? I don't. What did I miss? I mean, I don't know if it's going to – Adam Trout is designated a return. Oh, well, then, look. Did, did you know that? I did not hear. Oh, oh be still in my heart. Look, this, this play is only – going if Adam Troutman is still, in fact, out. <laughs> You're a wild man. Uh, and look, you know I play Troutman. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we know, uh, we but, know you will. But anyways, the Tampa Bay, they can be beat at the tight end position. And Deontay Harris, he's still out on suspension. His first game out was last week. And that turned into Nick Vanette seeing 20-plus uh, percent of the targets. So I think he will – I don't know that he has the upside of someone like David and Joku, but I think that off the waiver wire, if you need – Someone who's going to give you four to five points, I think Vanette's in play. <laughs> four, four to five. What? Like, no, honestly, I know, you, I know. Look I know. at what tight ends that did last week. That was such a truthful statement. <laughs> that was that was outstanding. All the rankings, the start, sit, tool, thefantasyfootballers.com. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week famished food has vanished and my double stuff size tummy howled through the night but i found a churro factory my tummy was satisfactory eating them with the jaguars matthew wright so now we're in a churro factory where we always knew we'd get to mm. Every good story ends with a churro factory. And covered in cinnamon and sugar. I mean, you've only got, what, four weeks left? Three weeks left to, to wrap this story up? Season one? Yeah, that is, I wait for the cliffhanger. This is the best part of the show. Yeah. It's been good this year. <laughs> You're welcome. Your stomach is satisfactory? Part. Yeah, it is now. I got a couple. I bought a couple dozen donuts out there in the lobby for to celebrate the... Yeah, speaking of that, we should wrap, celebrate this, the big wrap news. this thing up. Oh, no! <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.